uh, Charles Calvo uh, in his uh, presentation. Good morning. My name is uh, Charles Calvo. Thank you for having me here. I wanted to share with you this morning a uh, interesting case that I had the opportunity of encountering while working with a uh, retina specialist in Reno, Nevada. And uh, my presentation is titled The Reactivation of a Latent B Virus Presenting as Bilateral Uveitis, uh, Vasculitis, and Necrotizing Hepatic Retinitis. So the patient, he was a 41 year old gentleman who presented with a decreased vision and pain in his left eye. Uh, that began three weeks earlier. His past medical history was significant for being one of only 23 known survivors of a B virus infection. And this uh, infection is, is a zoonotic infection that he contracted from a macaw monkey bite in 1981. He was 18 years old and he was working in a uh, Charles River uh, animal laboratory in the southeast. And he was a uh, bit by a macaw and he developed a meningitis and encephalitis in which he uh, subsequently recovered without any uh, other neurological deficits. So I want to talk about this B virus um, just to get everyone up to speed on this rare uh, virus. So it's, a, it's in the alpha herpes virus family and it's endemic among uh, macaw monkeys and unfortunately it has a particularly high prevalence in uh, the laboratory populations of these animals. So this uh, virus is analogous to the herpes simplex uh, virus one and two in humans. So in the macaws, it causes stomatitis, conjunctivitis, and genital lesions. But in uh, humans, it's a, a devastating infection. Um, these, uh, the B virus and the herpes simplex virus also share um, morphologic and uh, immunologic uh, characteristics. There's some uh, uh, cross-reactivity of um, antibodies. And a, a bit of history, it's called B virus because there was a physician named Dr. William Brebner who was studying um, poliomyelitis with Albert Sabin. And he was bit, he ended up uh, dying from that infection and Albert Sabin um, isolated the virus from his body and named it B, uh, herpes B virus after him. So this uh, infection is uh, quite devastating. It results in ascending uh, encephalomyelitis that has a, a mortality rate of 80% in untreated individuals. And these uh, individuals can present with fever, weakness, conjunctivitis, diplopia, nystagmus, and uh, cranial nerve palsies. And that will uh, present within uh, five to 21 days from the exposure. And most of these patients will uh, perish within six weeks of that infection. So fortunately though, this is a very rare infection. There have only been 50 identified cases since 1959, but 27 of them have resulted in death. And uh, the transmission has been through uh, macaw bites, as we said with uh, the patient um, I'm presenting, scratches from the animal exposure to uh, the monkey tissues or fluid. And there's actually been one human to human uh, case where a husband had uh, vesicles of B virus infection on his hand. His wife then applied uh, hydrocortisone cream on the vesicles and then she applied it to herself for contact dermatitis and she ended up uh, coming down with the infection as well. So we were able to do uh, retinal photography in this patient and this is his left eye upon presentation. Uh, the visual acuity, um, his right eye was uh, 2015, 2060 in his left eye. And there you can see that uh, there's pallor of the optic, uh, of the optic disc, as well as uh, diffuse vitritis present. Late phase uh, fluorescein angiography was performed, and uh, you see there's hyperfluorescence of the optic disc, as well as uh, some leakage of the fluorescein along the inferior uh, vascular trunk. In the uh, temporal periphery of the left eye, we noted that there was a chorioretinal scar that was present. And so from this, this was the evidence that we had that the primary infection in 1981 did involve the left eye at least because uh, there was, um, you know, a previous scar there. 
Again, the left eye, you see there's a retinal lesion, a white uh, retinal lesion nasally, well, the detritus. And uh, here's the right eye at the time of presentation. The visual acuity in that right eye was 2015, and uh, the right eye was uninvolved at this time. So because of the findings on the examination and the imaging, as well as his uh, very significant past medical history, the patient was uh, admitted to the hospital in a hospital in Reno, Nevada under infectious disease consultation, and the patient began IV GAN cyclovir. As well as the IV uh, therapy, he began um, several rounds of intravitreal GAN cyclovir injections. So we uh, contacted the National B Virus Center, which is the uh, headquarters of the a study of this uh, virus, and it's in Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, fortunately, the B virus, uh, National B virus center was already very well familiar with this patient. Uh, they had been monitoring the patient since his initial infection in 1981, and they had been following his serology about every year since that time. So we were able to have a lot of great information about this patient. So they recommended that vitreous samples be taken from the left eye as well as uh, serum samples. And so we sent that to uh, Atlanta, Georgia for PCR and for uh, serology. So the results of the PCR confirmed the presence of B virus. So we ha came to the diagnosis that um, there was B virus infection. Uh, we uh, did a serial vitreous samples that showed that there was decreasing viral load um, upon the GAN cyclovir therapy. The serology, as it was uh, earlier, um, was positive for IgG to the various uh, B virus glycoproteins. And uh, from this information and our discussions with the B virus center, um, to our knowledge, this case was the first documented um, case of B virus latency and reactivation in a human. So this is a antibody profile graph that we were able to make, and uh, this shows data from uh, 1991 to 2009. And the, the relationships between the different antibodies to the various, uh, to the various uh, glycoproteins, you know, uh, B through G2, it's not very, it's not well understood at this point, the relationship between an active or chronic infection and how that relates to the serology. But from what the virologists um, know so far is that the, the GM and the G2 best correlate with an active infection. And so you see right here, um, there's a very sharp, very sharp spike. And, that, and the red line corresponds with that sharp uh, light blue line there. And so that reflects the, this uh, reactivation in the left eye. Uh, but what I'd like you to note is you see there's other spikes over the years that this patient has had, but he's never had clinical manifestations of the infection until this time. So it's really um, poorly understood, but we think that there's a lot of uh, cross-reactivity between herpes simplex and B virus that uh, gives these um, confusing uh, antibody profiles. So the patient's left eye was starting to resolve, and unfortunately, the right eye became symptomatic. The patient had began having decreased vision in the right eye as well as pain. And this was during the time that he was uh, now receiving just PO GAN cyclovir therapy. So you see that his uh, visual acuity of 2015 quickly became 2030. And you see numerous uh, white uh, retinal lesions nasally in this patient. Uh, this uh, early phase fluorescein angiography one week after the, re the right eye reactivation. Um, you see the arterial and venous filling as well as a, a hemorrhage present just outside of the macula. Um, late phase uh, angiography, at the same time you see the hyperfluorescence of the optic disc and a dilated and sheathed uh, vessels present. So I uh, wanted to show this profile to you again. So if you see the initial spike right there of the GM and the G2 glycoprotein, you see a small, uh, real sharp spike right after it, and that correlates with the reactivation in the right eye. So as I said, uh, during the time of the, the right eye activation, he was already on uh, antiviral therapy uh, for the left eye. And so we uh, 
put the patient back on IV gancyclovir, intravitreal injections of the gancyclovir, and then uh, also received a few rounds of uh, Foscarnet. Um, the right eye became, became uh, much worse than the left eye was. Um, the patient's vision proceeded to become about 20, uh, 200. Um, vitreal traction was noted on exam in the right eye, and so the a retina specialist uh, decided to uh, give the patient prophylactic laser uh, demarcation to pre prevent uh, impending uh, detachment. And so the, uh, the progression of the infection was worse in the right eye as well. We believe that there is some iatrogenic um, inflammation, trauma from the laser. So the right eye uh, was 2200, went to about 20 or 400 um, at that time. Fortunately though, the patient uh, did have a uh, fairly good recovery. The right eye did develop a cataract that um, uh, was removed. But uh, vision in the left eye um, returned to 20-20, uh, but uh, vision in the right eye was only able to return to 20-50 after uh, this infection. So I want to share with you just some of the recommendations from the National B Virus Center and the CDC on uh, B virus infection. So, uh, and it uh, depends on if it's just prophylaxis or if you're actually treating the infection, uh, s if there's a CNS uh, symptoms present or not. And so with our patient with uh, the symptoms in the eye, we uh, began with the gancyclovir. So there's uh, different uh, modalities of uh, antiviral therapy. So just in summary, this uh, case uh, demonstrates that uh, B virus is capable of latency and reactivation in human hosts. And uh, this reactivation can present only with ocular disease. And uh, the 80% mortality rate in the untreated individuals has now become about almost 80% survival in people that are treated promptly with antiviral therapy. So there may be more of these patients um, presenting. And so in conclusion, um, if you have a patient that has exposure to primates, maybe works in a virology lab or something, and they present with an ophthalmic complaint, uh, B virus is something that should be on the differential. Any questions? Got the mic? Well, uh, how similar this is to the uh, acute retinal necrosis. Um, I believe that it is very similar in appearance. You saw that there were some like inclusions in, in, the, uh, in the retinal lesions and uh, it progressed from the periphery as you saw and it was moving um, more uh, towards the middle of the, of the fundus. So I believe that there is similarities of it. If the PCR was very helpful in, in uh, distinguishing if this was a uh, herpetic uh, necrotizing herpetic infection from simplex versus B virus. So that's how we were able to come to that conclusion. But as far as the uh, famcyclovir, yeah, I know that in the literature it has shown that it, that has been used, but I think that um, the, these recommendations in part are in place because a lot of the bioavailability of the different antivirals compared to another, like that's why acyclovir is viewed as an alternative as par uh, compared to main line, uh, mainstay of therapy, just to the um, how frequent the patient needs to have it, the side effect profile, and the bioavailability of those uh, different antivirals. So, no, I, I, they were not an implant; they were just uh, injections. Any other questions? All right, thank you.